morning. I'm the uh, VP and GM of our cloud calling platforms at Cisco. And our developer platform uh, that is really the first cloud API that uh, Cisco has built itself and uh, launched. A little bit about me first is I actually live in Half Moon Bay, California, which is in the San Francisco Bay. It's the home of the Mavericks, which are actually 20 meter waves, roughly, that happen this time of year. I don't go near those. I, I do try to surf, but it's mostly me uh, getting drugged by my board in the surf rather than actually riding the waves. Uh, I was a startup CEO myself. I've been a coder all my life. I'm very happy to hear about the Go track, obviously. So I'm a big fan uh, boy of Go. Uh, so my company was actually acquired by Cisco about a year and a half ago. Uh, so Cisco is the first large company I've ever worked for. I've always been an entrepreneur, startup guy, coding, stuff like that. And it's actually been a great experience coming here because there is a real movement within Cisco to really focus on developers uh, going forward. I do call myself a uh, recovering uh, Rubyist. I tend to be a fanboy in whatever language I engage. Now it's all about Go, uh, as you can see, so I'll definitely be following that track today. And the last uh, hack I did, or tinkering that was uh, of any notoriety, I actually took a Tesla, wired it into an Amazon Echo, and had it pull out of a garage. And I used that really to try and badger Elon on Twitter, Elon Musk, to actually open up the API and support it rather than everyone having to reverse engineer it all the time. So one of the things I really believe in is everyone should learn to code, from kids to people in the community to all of your coworkers. And there's a very interesting movement by the new CEO over at GE, which is every new employee that comes in, regardless of what position they have, is being taught to code, right? Because it gives you the basic premise of, of what, it, what the technology is, what's happening, how to do things and empowers people to really engage you know, in what's happening in terms of technology evolution. So this is something that I'm a big proponent of both within Cisco and outside because with Tropa, we were actually building a developer community ourselves, which was over 200,000 people uh, registered with the, the platform and really making those APIs easy and putting them in everyone's hands. And what I found is that on a regular basis when we would go to meetups and things like that, People would be really inspired by how easy the APIs are and things like that and really engage on that. So Cisco's actually been doing a lot in terms of engaging community, teaching people at a very early stage of their career about technology and what we're doing. There's a program called Net Academy, which is a uh, program where there's actually three million alumni around the world now where you go to various places and there's a curriculum that universities are teaching trade schools and the like that are teaching you network routing, technology around that, puts you on the path to being a CCNA or CCIE, which are the certifications of Cisco that we have. And there's actually been a pilot program here in Milan where they've been using this within one of the prisons, actually the uh, Boyate, Bolete prison, uh, where they've been using Net Academy there to actually teach convicts technology so when they leave, they actually have a trade to go and engage with. And what they found is it's a small uh, case study right now, but they're planning to expand it. There's actually 0% recidivism for anyone that actually uh, graduates the Net Academy program, which is a very powerful statement that you're taking someone's life from you know, being imprisoned, whatever they've done, giving them a skill, pushing them out there, and now they've got a, a technology career. Another thing I'm personally passionate about and I do a lot of in the Bay Area and encourage Cisco worldwide is engage in the community as well. So there's two programs I'm involved with, with my team and others at Cisco, uh, which one is Girls Inc., which is a uh, program in Oakland, California, uh, that's focused on underserved or underprivileged girls K through 12, teaching them STEM, teaching them to be well-rounded, things like that. So we're putting together programs with them to actually you know, update their STEM curriculums, make them relevant, take them beyond you know, writing HTML or CSS to actually coding and things like this. And it's, it has a, a very profound impact in terms of how many of those girls end up going to college, whereas they're the first one in their family to ever have done that. The other program uh, we're involved with is the Hidden Genius Project and an upcoming event uh, in December called Brothers Code, which is again about underserver, underserved boys within the same community and doing the same things. And we're putting a lot of our effort and energy in actually doing this because again, you know, the power of technology and what you're doing and the capabilities can fundamentally change someone's life and, and push them down the right path. 
Now at Cisco, we have our DevNet program, which is about two years old. Cisco has not traditionally been known as a developer-friendly uh, 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 company because we've largely been selling the, the fabric of the internet, which are the routers and the switches and things like that. But obviously we recognize the world's changing. Everything's moving to the cloud or has moved to the cloud really. And, and we're putting out new services capabilities and really a strong developer program of which I participate in. We have some of the people here, like uh, Steve, who's a member of that, where we're really providing all the tools and resources to be able to engage uh, the community on, on the various DevNet platforms. So you, if, uh, if you go to the site, there's a one-stop shop for everything developer at Cisco. It's developer.cisco.com. And the uh, thing there is, is it goes anywhere from the APIs to our routers, to the great Wi-Fi systems of Rocky and being able to get feeds off of them of everything happening on your network, through to our collaboration APIs, which I'll go into in a little bit of detail in a moment. So effectively, you go, you go one place and you've got everything that Cisco has to offer. Now, some developers are going to only want certain parts of that, uh, but you've got access to everything. All right. So what we're looking to do with this is Cisco really is focused in, and the division that I am in is really around collaboration, IoT, and all the cloud services that are coming out within Cisco. So we're really working to transform the industry when you think about all of the different applications of IoT, connected cities. One of the gentlemen that's going to be presenting one of the sessions, Angelo, is actually working on that stuff down in Dubai. Just flew in this morning to present here. And uh, with that, Cisco is really pushing on making sure everything is open, programmable. Uh, we're open sourcing a lot. My background is I've done a lot of open source projects that have actually parlayed into the Tropo startup that I ended up selling to Cisco. Uh, so there's a lot of work happening in that space, including some of the stuff we're doing within my group, which is open sourcing the SDKs and the like. So we're really, you know, it's, it's the new Cisco of being open and, and a programmable platform. And with that, we're really building that, that dynamic community of developers. I believe DevNet today has about 400,000 registered developers as well, and it's growing quite rapidly, especially as we're moving more and more into the cloud APIs and, and platforms at Cisco. So really, there's a few things, I'm going to go ahead and build this out, that you can get at, at uh, DevNet. One of the things I was surprised about at uh, Cisco, actually, is all of our internal source repositories are on GitHub. Not the public GitHub, the private GitHub. But we're, they've been Git users all throughout, and I'm, I'm very proud of that because I think I was like GitHub user number 768, so I was a very early adopter, which I, I tend to be. So we're also using GitHub in terms of everything we're publishing uh, from our platform. And what we're making sure we're doing is making things as easy as possible. So when you come to us and engage the platform and the different APIs, you're often running very quickly. So we've got all the training programs around that, all of the access, and then places where you can actually publish what you've done. So you can actually begin to participate in the community within Cisco as well. So you'll get a taste of this today if you go to the uh, open lab that uh, was mentioned at the beginning where we're running regular tracks both online at events like this to learn how to use the different Cisco technologies. And one of the things that, things that my group is focused on is really making those things as easy as possible. We don't want you to have to spend a lot of time doing our APIs so much as understanding how to use them for value in what you're doing. So we focus more on the outcomes that you have by making those APIs very easy. So if you uh, go to uh, uh, Steve and Jonathan's uh, uh, lab, you'll get a taste for that, and I encourage you to do so. Another thing is, is being able to, once you learn a platform and things like that, what do you actually do with it? And we've created the DevNet creation site, which is a place where developers can come and share what they've done, create some notoriety for themselves, and actually publish both their code, what they've done, etc. So if you go there now, you'll actually see a myriad of things that we've done internally, as well as developers have done externally on the platform. And then within that, a, a, a community where you can come and engage with other developers as well. So a full set of forums, full set of uh, chat rooms you can come and speak to and really come up to speed quickly on what we're doing and share ideas with other developers within our community as well. Now, one of the areas that I'm focused on is in our collaboration group. So what Cisco is known for in terms of you know, the business side of things is really the collaboration platforms that we have. We're the leader in telepresence video. 
uh, all the high quality systems you might see. In fact, I was at Talent Garden here in Milan yesterday where they have one of our systems there. Uh, they're you know, beautiful and one of the things, you know, Tropo was a global startup. We had developers, even though we were relatively small in Beijing and London and Singapore and things like this, and we were using chat to do all of that and Skype video and, and things like this. Coming to Cisco now where I've got actual access to telepresence makes you know, global collaboration much easier. We're making that available to developers at places like Talent Garden. And what Cisco Spark is, it, it was an initiative that was started about three years ago to really rethink and redesign how collaboration should work. And collaboration is critical for everyone in this room because it's how you actually get things done in distributed teams, in different projects, and things like this. And within Spark, which is our first cloud platform for collaboration, you can go and you can do ad hoc meetings, scheduled meetings, uh, and uh, it's a messaging platform. And the key is it's a business messaging platform, not just chat. So you can write bots and integrations and weave it into what you're doing within your business and then make phone calls. And where I'm responsible for part of what I'm doing is the Spark for Developers as well. So this was really the first foray into a cloud API built at Cisco. And I think we've done a good job. You'll get to see some of that if you go into the, uh, into the sessions. So uh, with that, you um, have the collaboration cloud and all the different APIs that go with that on how you can interact with the people of a system, the rooms, the messages, and all of the content. And the key here is, you know, if you're doing continuous integration, development, deployment, you know, DevOps uh, approach, having a system like this is critical. You've got people out there that have been using Slack and other platforms, and Spark enables all those same capabilities as well, so we're integrated with everything you would expect from, from that perspective. It's really enabled developers to, to get their work done. Another thing we're seeing out there is, and again, this goes back to the theme of, I think everyone in this room should be out educating people on how to code, what technology is. It's really upon us to, to you know, push the envelope out there. And what we're seeing is while we have native integrations and APIs and things like that, we're seeing a lot of platforms like Stampplay, which is an Italian startup, or uh, Ift, or uh, Built.io, that's really enabling non-developers or power users to go and do complex integrations within platforms, whether it be Spark or Slack or other, other capabilities out there. So we're seeing a real need to drive that simplicity again into the hands of not just developers like us, but uh, power users as well. So we've created the uh, Cisco Spark for developers with all of the SDKs uh, uh, and, and APIs to do that. And we'll be talking about that later today as well. And a key part here is we want to not only enable people to develop things, but then be discoverable and be able to actually engage with our community, both in terms of our partners, our customers. And you know, Cisco's in every major company on the planet. Everyone's using our, we have greater than 50% market share in all the collaboration technologies and things like this. So we give you access to uh, what you've developed into our community through our depot as well. And here you can see you know, some of the usual suspects from you know, meme bots or GIF bots and uh, you know, different integration capabilities as well. And I think you know, when you're developing platforms, when you're writing code, when you're uh, uh, effectively doing things for your user or developer community, one of the things we've really taken to heart uh, is uh, the, the design process and design thinking around thinking of developers as first class users of our platform. So if we're doing something like a collaboration platform, you've got to design for user experience and uh, you know, make sure it's usable and people like to use it and all those good things. But we believe it's also just as important from the start to actually uh, consider developer experience as part of that process as well. So APIs are a part of that. What is the developer engagement like? How does it feel to be a developer on the platform? So we think about those things very carefully, and I would encourage everyone here to do the same, because the easier you make your platforms to use your APIs for both your users and your developers, the more engaging it will be uh, for you as well. So I would encourage everyone to join the DevNet community uh, and uh, in engage with us here. Uh, I'm looking forward to Code Emotion coming to the US. I understand there's an effort to do that as well. So definitely look to have us participate there as well. You can follow uh, DevNet on Twitter, uh, and you know, I would also encourage you to sign up for Tropo. That's the startup they acquired as well. And that allows you to do you know, telephony and voice SMS APIs and things like that. So you'll see we've got a uh, couple of uh, 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 things happening here today. We've uh, got the keynote, of course, 
Uh, we're going to do a drone demo with some of the IoT stuff that we're doing that's related to the, uh, the gentleman that's coming from the Connected Cities. And then we've also uh, got the ability to go out and create microservices, chatbots that can work across different platforms as well with the different APIs like Cody Motion has. Uh, and we have a phone number where you can actually call or text and find out what's coming up next uh, at the session as well. And that's actually using the Tropo API, right? So that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Honored to be here. And I'll turn it over to you. <laughs>